for 1988 when Stacy King and company lost to Kansas in the championship game. The final score here, 88 to 67. And the Chevrolet players of the game, Jason Gardner for Arizona, although he did struggle, and Hollis Price, how about this? Six of 11 from the three-point line. 88-67 the final for Dan Bonner and Solomon Wilcox, Gus Johnson saying so long. Greg Gumbel coming up right after this. With 11 seconds left, and Mike Krzyzewski telling his team, if he makes, get it up into the front court area and take a timeout. The star for Indiana off the bench has been Moye. A four-point game. Ewing fires the three. Not there. Williams looks for the three. Oh, he scores, and he's fouled. A chance to tie. Unbelievable. And terrific body control by Williams leaning into Jeffrey Newton. I said he would be the wild card in this game, but I never thought it would be on a play like that to let Duke maybe back in. He misses the free throw. Bozer gets the rebound and tipped again. Rebounded by Indiana. The game is over. The Hoosiers, with a major upset, have defeated the number one team in the nation. Dick Enberg with the call. That is how the Duke-Indiana game wound down. Welcome back to our studios here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. And uh, coming up next, we will be sending all of you to the south, to Lexington, where Kent State will take on number three seed Pittsburgh. Tip time for that game is 10-12 Eastern time. Those of you ticketed to see the second game in the west in San Jose between Missouri and UCLA, the tip time there is 10-19 Eastern time, and we'll get you to San Jose in time for the start of that game. But as we sit and watch this footage replay over and over of Indiana and Duke. I'm not sure Coach Mike Davis wants to watch it. No, he probably won't, but he loves the result, and that won't change no matter how many times he watches it. His team did a nice job in the second half, asserted themselves inside. They closed off the turnovers, 16 turnovers in the first half, just seven in the second half, and then they got huge production from A.J. Moye, six of eight big free throws down the stretch, 10 of his 12 points in that second half. And then again, they got a couple of good bounces, and typically to beat a number one team, you've got to get a few bounces to go your way. Now, we've been talking about Mike Davis. You have to think he's one happy Hoosier just a short while ago. Dick Enberg had a conversation with the Indiana coach and also Jared Jeffries. Jared Jeffries, how do you hold in the emotion? It's unbelievable. I mean, the team worked so hard this whole year um, to get to this point. I mean, everybody came out tonight. We had a game plan. First half was kind of shaky. Second half, we did well, executed it. Looked a little nervous in the first half. Yeah, I mean, we were. Duke's a very good team. Put a lot of pressure on us. Um, it took us a while to get used to it, but after we did, our offense looked good, and we played great defense. Congratulations. Thank you. On to the Elite Eight for the Hoosiers and Coach Mike Davis and a three-year-old son. This guy's so cute, I should try to interview him. Boy, he wants to play. How about it, Coach? Any, uh, sh what did you see in the last two or three minutes? Well, first thing, I, I, I just thank God for this opportunity and this victory. No one believed in us in winning this basketball game. And I told our guys that defensively, they don't want to play defense on the inside. We got to get the ball inside. And Jerry Jeffers stepped up like a champ. When your team finally won, you raced over to the near side of the court pointing. Was that at your family? Well, I saw Coach Newton. He used to coach me in college. He used to be down there, the director here at Kentucky. C.M. Newton, who used Newton. to be here at Kentucky. Or is it Kentucky? Wait, well, he's not, he's not here anymore. You know, wait to my family, my president, Coach President Brand, Clay Pax, and all those guys really stood behind me as a coach. And I hope now that people know I can coach. <laughs> you commented that the ghost of Bobby Knight has been hovering around you. People have said, well, you can't coach the way he did. This is your biggest win. We're on our way. We're on our way. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations indeed to Mike Davis. He advances with a 74-73 win over the Duke Blue Devils. As we mentioned a little while ago, Duke's last tournament loss, March of the year 2000 against Florida. That year, Florida was also a number five seed, as is Indiana tonight. And Duke was a number one. They snapped Duke's eight-game winning streak in tournament games. Oklahoma is a winner tonight, and we'll, tell you, we'll come back after a timeout and hear from Coach Kelvin Sampson. His Oklahoma Sooners advance in the West. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to our studios in New York, everyone. Here's what's still to come this evening. In the South, in Lexington, Kent State against the number three seed Pittsburgh. That game tips at 10 12 Eastern Time. Everybody will see that game. And then if you're headed to San Jose, you will see Missouri and UCLA at 10 19 Eastern Time, a game that features two teams that has a little history between them. Let's take you back to second round action, 1995. One last try for the Bruins of UCLA to get into the Sweet 16. Knocked out last year in the first round by Tulsa. They don't want to lose this one. Edney going the distance. Yes! So those two teams will meet again this evening, and the winner will take on the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners, the number two seed in the West, winners over Arizona by a score of 88 to 67. And Kelvin Sampson's team moves on. And after the game, Solomon Wilcox had a chance to talk with the Oklahoma coach. Kelvin Sampson, you said at halftime you had to make some changes and you had to get it going with defense. What changes were made? Well, I think the main thing we did was uh, we just switched a couple of um, assignments. Putting Selvi on Walton was big because I thought Selvi would uh, do a little bit better job than Ebby would do. But the main thing is, is that, you know, we just got back to our identity. We just played sooner basketball. We got into them. We defended. We re rebounded. But before I said anything else, Solomon, I got to give a big shout out to Papa Ned. Papa Ned, hope you're feeling better. Sooners are in the Elite Eight. Thank and you. he was also pleased yeah. with the job by Hollis Price. Yeah. How big were the six three-pointers in the first half? Well, that kept us in it. But you know what, Solomon? Our team has always been a team of parts. Uh, they did a great job of doubling Aaron, and that opened it up for Hollis. But uh, we, we took what they gave us, and we've been doing that all year. Now, you told us that you had been flying under the radar screen, but not any longer. We want to be under the radar. <laughs> there, after, uh, after today and tomorrow, there's only eight teams left. The Sooners are one of them. Um, our goal is to win one more game and see what happens. Okay, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. Well, he wasn't that far under the radar screen because there was a lot of sentiment about Oklahoma possibly being one of those number one seeds on Selection Sunday. Without question, we felt there were five number ones, and the fifth one was Oklahoma. They do it with defense, Greg. They come at you hard for 40 minutes, and when they clamp down defensively, that saran wrap suffocating D, they made it really tough for Arizona to score. They scored 30 points in the second half. No place on that D for those lazy guys from Survivor there either. We'll take a timeout, and we'll continue right after this.